Hello everyone, my name is Mehrdad from Maastricht University. As Pablo mentioned, I work on hard sound, especially hard sound simulation. Today I'm going to talk about simulation of the first and second hard sound. We all know about this signal, which is called ECG, and all the peaks and valleys of this signal are named, and we interpret it precisely and we get a lot of information about electrical activation of the heart. But what about this signal? No clue, I think. This is called heart sound. We have no precise interpretation because we just listen to it, but it has a lot of information about mechanical function of the heart. This signal has two major parts. The first part is the first heart sound, and it is described as lop. And the other part is dop, which is called the second heart sound. This signal is a low frequency signal. It is mostly between 10 to 200 hertz. And it changes by physiological and pathological conditions in terms of amplitude, frequency, and timing. So we can use these features for diagnosis and prognosis. There are various theories about the genesis of this and second heart sound. It is postulated that looseness and suddenly tension in valve membranes generate S1 and S2, or sudden tension in chordate tendinate or forceful striking of valve leaflets generate S1 and S2. But the widely accepted theory is that heart sounds are acoustic vibrations that are generated by mechanical interactions of the cardiohemic structures, including valve, myocardium, and blood mass. S1 has two components, mitral component, which is generated by mitral valve, and tricuspid component from tricuspid valve. And also S2 has two components as well, aortic component and pulmonic component. So we have four components in the two major heart sounds. The objective of this work is to propose a mathematical model which generates the first and second heart sounds from hemodynamics. In this figure, here you see circular. It's a long parameter model of human heart and circulation. You see chambers here, left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, right ventricle, aortic valve, pulmonic valve, tricuspid valve, and right atrium. We use a two degree of freedom mechanical vibration system to simulate vibration at every, each heart valve. For example, for mit mitral component, we use blood mass trapped in left atrium, Viscoelastic properties of mitral valve, viscoelastic properties of myocardium in left atrium, viscoelastic properties of the left ventricular free wall, and blood mass trapped in left ventricle. And the driving force here is the pressure difference between the two chambers that generates the vibration for mitral component of the first heart sound. So, we simulate the different conditions in circuit out. We simulated exercise by increasing both heart rate and cardiac output. And we generated eight different intensities. And also we made heart failure by reducing systolic heart failure, I should mention, 
by reducing myocardial active stress. We made right ventricular heart failure by reduction in RV free wall. Left ventricular heart failure by reduction in LV free wall and septum. And complete heart failure by reduction in all valves. We got recordings on myocardium by doing experiment on pig and putting accelerometer on RV base. And also, we use the recordings which are available in PhysioNet dataset to have recordings from the chest. Here, in this figure, you see the simulation data in the left. The first row shows the pressures from the left and right side of the heart. The second row shows you the heart sound, S1 and S2. This row shows the sounds generated in the left side of the heart. And the last row shows the sound generated from the right side of the heart. It is noticeable that the sounds in the left have higher amplitude than the right because of the more energy in the left. Also here we see the ex experimental data. You see the pressure and heart sounds recorded on myocardium. So we see a similar morphology to experiment from heart sound from the simulation. Sorry. So in this figure, we see frequency spectrum the simulation. We see that the simulation is within the frequency range and has similar morphology to the piece phonocardiograms. Here, we have three panels. The first panel is our reference. The second panel is left ventricular heart failure. The third, right ventricular heart failure. The first row is showing pressure and heart sounds generated from the left side of the heart. Second row from the right side of the heart. And the last row shows the heart sound. It is noticeable that we have a reverse splitting in left ventricular heart failure, but in right ventricular heart failure, we have an exaggerated splitting in S2. This figure shows an experiment done by Bergman on normal subjects and subjects with coronary artery disease. All the black lines here are the data from the experiment. In the left, you see that young normal subjects have a linear relation with the amplitude ratio of control and cardiac output. And our simulation shows similar behavior. Also, in the right, you see that with Increasing the level of severity of heart failure, we have, an, we have a reduction in S1 amplitude. And we see that we have similar behavior in the experimental data. So S1 amplitude is related to cardiac output and myocardium active stress. In this figure, 
our data shows that our data is close to the average of amplitudes in both normal and patients which have 20 bits per minute and 40 bits per minute heart rate difference from the reference and also evident that with exercise we don't have a significant increase in S2. So S2 magnitude didn't change significantly with exercise in both experiment and simulation. This figure, the black dots, are experimental data done by Sakamoto in dogs. They did infusion of drugs to get various conditions, and they got this linear relation between S1 amplitude ratio of control and LV DPDT max. And this line is our reference data from simulation. As we increase the severity of heart failure, we see that we have a reduction in LV DPDT max, also S1 amplitude. This figure shows A2, P2 splitting time interval. We see that we have maximum time interval between A2 and P2 when we have the most severe heart failure, but at, norm, at normal cardiac output. In left ventricular heart failure, we see that both cardiac output and severity of heart failure both involve in the splitting of these two. And this positive value shows reverse splitting of stool. In the right, we see the time interval between A2 and P2 for right ventricular heart failure. And we see that maximum splitting occurs when we have the most severe heart, right ventricular heart failure, but it's not significantly related to cardiac output. So, conclusion here is, to the best of our knowledge, right the hemodynamic-based heart sound generation model, which is embedded in a complete real-time model of the cardiovascular system. And also, our model is realistic for rest and various levels of exercise, as well as different types and degrees of systolic heart failure. Thank you, that's it from me. Thank you very much, Murda. Audience, please talk it open to your questions, comments, and suggestions. Please engage. I uh, hear a little bit noise. I don't know where yeah. I think it might be coming from you. I was checking whether someone else had the microphone open. Uh -huh. You are the only one with the microphone open. It was a little bit distracting. Ernesto Sakur, maybe I'm going to mute that participant. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Cameron. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the uh, very interesting presentation. I'm just wondering um, whether you see this in the future. Um, the results that you found, whether you can use this this data and potentially going forward to help with the diagnosis of some of these diseases that you've um, that you've highlighted. Yeah. Your question is whether we can do it or not. Yeah. So do you, do you see this being clinically translated and used to in the diagnosis? Yeah. Uh, that's a nice question, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the, the major step now is to find
hard time is generated because it was a kind of a century long question that how so hard sound is really generated by modeling we can go in depth and see how these relations work and then yeah for for different uh, as you know for different diseases they have proposed they have said okay this disease has such a symptoms in second or first heart sound in terms of amplitude or uh, timing or frequency but all of them are not accurately done by signal processing or by the mathematical uh, works you know it's just uh, clinical and by hearing so if we go in this way in a quantitative way we can measure heart sound precisely we can interpret heart sound for different diseases precisely in the model first and then in a clinical space and then we can come up with new features for diagnosis and prognosis of the diseases in my opinion it is possible and it's a direction that we are taking great thank you go hello hello, hello. Uh, Mehrsad, very nice presentation. I, I think the work you are doing in Maastricht is very, very nice. You will go. And Philip, uh, I, I had just one question regarding the location. Where do you measure actually the heart sounds? Because when you showed the, in your slide number eight the measure directly, the heart sound was always located in the isovolumetric periods. And when you show the, your simulation, the heart sound is always located when the valve uh, opens, both the aortic valve and the mitral valve. Opens or closed? Okay, first in this slide. You see that uh, the, the, all the heart sounds are in the, between the two narrow uh, traced lines. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Why? Why now is, trace line you mean the dashed lines yeah the, because the volume, those dashed okay. lines i guess they refer to yeah. the valve events opening and closure of no, the no, no, aortic no. or mitral valve so and yeah, the, yeah. the, the sounds are always in between yeah, yeah. Uh, the dashed lines indicate the beginning and the ending of isovolumetric contraction and exactly. relaxation time which yeah. gets from and the activation and the, the uh, activation of the model is the time that we have a backward flow toward the valve. It's after closure, after pressure crossover, both of them. There is a delay between those to the because when we have a flow, the backward flow toward the valve, the vibration occurs, and the, that's the time that we have the sound for all the. Then can you go to slides to the front where you show your model? Okay, model. I, no, no, the other yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Model is here. No. Uh, is slide one? number 10, I think, where you show the same plot but of your model. 10 here? Yes, exactly. Um, you hear the heart sound seems to be at the beginning or like when the valve uh, opens. The opening of the valve, look yeah. here, we have a pressure crossover, okay, and somewhere here, this is the opening of the valve. We cannot say, okay, it's exactly no. so. I didn't indicate here, unfortunately. That we, when is the opening of the valve? But the occurrence of these sounds is the time that they have a back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Carlos. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I really, really liked it. And I had a question related to the if you thought about analyzing also the s3 sound because i think it's also related with 
heart failure uh, condition, but I know it's more related with the with the feeling of the left ventricle, but I don't know if you consider it or or maybe it's not useful for some reason that I that I didn't think of. Uh, actually, it's a nice question. I appreciate it. Uh, I I have another model for S3 and S4, which we work. We are working. We, we have finished working on it actually, but it is another model, and it wasn't enough time to present it uh, here this session. But yeah, for sure we are working on S3 and S4 as well. And yeah, and the, the take home message from me here is S3 S4 are always happening in all the hearts of people. Doesn't matter if they have physiological or pathological problems. The, the point is S3 and S4 get amplified or get uh, higher frequencies with pathological and physiological conditions. That's why when we hear them in those conditions, otherwise, Normal humans always have a strange for it's the thing that we have found in our scene. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.